Hi. Hi. So happy one year. That's where we're starting with this, okay? Woo! So it's actually crazy. I'm not used to this. This feels like the old podcast. I know. Okay, so what I'll say is I can't believe it's been one year since the millionth rebrand of this show. It flew. It flew. Flew by. Okay, so for those of you that are new here and don't know myself or don't know Julie, I am Devorah. I am the host of this podcast, We're All Insane. Um, Julie is my very, very good friend and also producer. This is a two-man show. Two-man show. She's the bodyguard, the producer, the editor. She does it all. Attack dog. Um, Yes. So I guess a little background maybe we should start with. Sure. Well, first off, the reason we're making this episode is because we had a guest cancel. Actually, not cancel. Not show. No show. Yeah. And... A tough part about this business here is that every now, I mean, it's a guest-based show. So like we're relying on the guests to show up, which obviously so grateful for everybody that wants to come on. But we've had a couple instances where people just don't come. Don't and then, say that they're and not And they coming. don't tell us. Yeah. Um, and it kind of sucks because... One, we never want to miss a week, but it puts us in a position where we might have to miss a week, but we're not missing a fucking week. No. That's why we're here. And what better time for the two men of this show to come on here (laughs) and shoot the fucking shit on the one year anniversary. Exactly. So some background. Yeah. Where do we start? And you're part of this background. Okay. Okay. We're going to start that once again. If you guys are new here, this show used to be something different. Very different. The show used to be Free the Girls, and then it was Girls After Dark. There was like a little name change because, what was it? Legal issues. Thank you. (laughs) See, Julie, it helps my brain. Um, So basically, that show was just shooting the shit with my best friend, Claudia. We ran out of things to talk about. And then there was what? A day or, well, there was a day. That I think I thought my life was ending. Yeah, you had a panic. I was like, what am I gonna do? I I this is what I do on social media. You're like, I'm fucked. Right. Forever. And Julie actually and Brandon, but they both were like, You should keep doing a podcast yourself. Just like yeah. you you're good at it. You can talk. And I'm like, no way. Yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't have done a podcast if I didn't start with Claudia. Yeah. But basically. Julie and Brandon, they both kind of inspired me to continue the show. So I didn't even take a week off, right? And I made a new name. Launched. Launched. Yeah. Had some guests that I knew locally. And now we're lucky enough that we have most, I would say, almost all the guests reach out to us. Yeah. And want to come and share their stories and be vulnerable. And it's great. It's amazing. Taking life of its own. It's like completely different. But very fulfilling. Yes. We both love it. Yeah. Um, I feel like it fulfills us because we're able to learn. Yeah. But we're also able to help the people coming on and we're able to help the audience that listens and make them feel like they can be heard and relate. Maybe we'll just have this episode be kind of like a... What if it's like background of like you and me? Background, little update. for Like update for those that do know us. Update for those that don't. Yeah. Get to know us if you don't know us. Because right. I know, like Julie was saying, you know, well, Julie's <laughs> behind the scenes and then I'm here, but I just, I'm more like the, what is that called? Not a placeholder, but I kind of like, I hold down the fort, You've, but I let yeah. people take away. Oh, that's something that I want to mention too, because I see a lot of mixed comments of like, mm-hmm. some people will say, I don't talk enough. And then when I do ask questions, people say I'm asking too many. The way that the show is set up, just so that we're all on the same page and everybody understands <laughs> It's a guest-based show, and on every call I have with my guests, I tell them that I want this platform to feel like it is their show, and I let them have full control and take it wherever they want. Some people come on and they speak in chronological order, telling their story. Some people have a topic, and they kind of bring it in multiple different talking points, and Julie edits it together. Mm -hmm. Um, I only really try to pitch in when I feel like the guest kind of needs a helping hand or if I think of a natural just like question that I feel like the audience would be wondering too and I just pitch in, I never try to interrupt. I never try to overstep. I really like, like I said, my goal is really just for people to feel like they can come on, kind of almost have like this therapeutic session, be vulnerable, open up, share their story, their experience. And I mean, it's really as simple as that. Yeah. It's point blank period, just raw, real people. Yeah. And I feel like I only really try to pitch in if they need me to or like, yeah. So that's kind of why I sit here sometimes and don't do much. But like, that's why I'm not 
I'm not bored. I'm yeah. learning. I'm listening. And that's. You're just chilling. I'm just chilling. Yeah. I'm chilling in my chair. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Dog just moved the camera a little. Okay. I guess we could just talk about like where this all started for the people who don't know mm-hmm. of like being in Brandon's videos and whatnot, like that type of thing. Because you've been in like on social media for what? Five, five years? Six years? Or no, no. Okay. You're making six. me feel old over there. I know. Sorry. How long has it been? I feel like COVID. How long was COVID? That's when it really started. Three. Three years. Okay. So it hasn't yeah. been that long. So like three yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. You start. Well. I need to take a sip of my witch's brew. Yeah. Shit. Because I'm a witch. And we uh, there's actually a broom in here too. So. Yeah, there's a broom above. We got um, lots of construction around. Today, I, I said, the minute I walked in here yep. today, I said, something's in the air, something's wrong. And our guests didn't show up and... I, maybe I, like, drinking my witch's brew, maybe I made that happen. Maybe it's my fault. But anyway. So, Dev and I have been in videos before, you know, Brandon Walsh, superstar extraordinaire, <laughs> included us in his content for a while and then you know whatever the fuck else happened and we became friends along the way yeah we actually became friends because our boyfriends at the time yes at the time yeah were living together and they're best friends they've been best friends for years and we would always hang out at their house because they were roommates and then one day julie i don't think you were working right and then i was like i started the show and i was like I would really like if somebody was here to monitor video and audio because I yeah. can't really do that and focus on the guest. Yeah. And I was like, would you want to just come and like once a week? And it was perfect. Yeah. And it was then that's literally, how it started. Yeah. It was like I had just graduated college. I've been looking for jobs. I had one lined up and I was like getting to the third round of interviews and then they stopped hiring because of mm-hmm. all these hiring freezes that were going on at the time. And literally like the week after is when you asked me. Yeah. And it was like, per- I swear to God, just shit works out for a reason. Mm-hmm. And this show has grown into something that I feel like we always kind of would dream. Dreamed. <laughs> but it's like so genuinely fulfilling and yeah. cool to be able to do this thing that we're doing. And it just like kind of beyond your wildest dreams. It bro. is. It is. It's fucking cool because it's real shit, real people. And like we've talked about this before. We don't want to go down like the celebrity route, really, because no. it's like, how many podcasts are there out there that it's just the same people talking to the same people? Mm-hmm. And it's always like, okay, or congratulations. Or just like people that aren't necessarily relatable. Like, I yeah. think everybody can relate one way, and another, one way or another, but I think having people come on here and just sharing their story and that's it yeah, kind yeah. of just makes you feel like it's like a safe space. 100%. Yeah. It's a For safe everybody. space. and. For people who can relate, mm-hmm. it's amazing. And then for people who can't, they're getting to know somebody's yeah, and learn. real experience. Yeah. So it's been awesome. But I swear, just things really do happen for a reason. They do. I was like scared. I was like, oh, I'm shit. I'm scared. I still am scared some days, but it's okay. We're on the today, together. Today we're scared. Yes. Hence why we're here. <laughs> Good thing we both have a voice to speak. Yeah. So. And we can talk for hours. Yes. Just talk shit. That's what we mainly do is just sit here and wait and talk. Yeah. So basically how it started was the videos that we were in. It was a vlog channel. We would do like really fun things. We would party. We would. Partay. We did a lot of stuff. Like a lot of random cool things. Like crazy shit. Yeah. I never would have done. Balls. We did vacation. Renfest. You know. Renfest. Did you like Renfest? I like it there. Yeah. Yeah. I like the vibes there. I had a great time. I like that stuff. It's just entertaining. Yes. It's just like crazy people. When is that? Do we miss September. it? September. Oh, okay. So it's September coming. and October. Okay, I'm going. Yeah. We're going. 100%. So, yeah, we just did a bunch of stuff in Brandon's vlogs. Um, for those of you that don't know who Brandon is, so my best friend Claudia, who used to be on this show, it's her brother. She's been my best friend for like over 10 years. Yeah. Her brother and I, we ended up starting to film together around COVID. We ended up dating for two years. I always say it was like, my healthiest relationship in the sense that like we really didn't argue um he's very mature in that sense very very business oriented he i i always give him credit like he is the most like smart businessman type guy that i know honestly like if i ever needed anything business related that's who i would go to um but as far as like the reason we broke up i know people wonder or still ask what happened basically i would say like a year and a half in or so I started thinking about the future and thinking about, okay, do I see myself living with with this person? Do I see myself having kids? And like, I didn't see any of that. 
And I feel like there was just no deep emotional connection. And I am somebody that like really needs to feel that to have something last and hold together. And I feel like the future can always change. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of dumb in a way to plan because it can change. But like everybody, I feel like wants to know to some degree, like, are we on the same page? Do we both want kids? Do we both want to live together one day? Like it doesn't need to be now. Super important questions. Yes. So I feel like that just wasn't there. Um, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of emotional reassurance. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and it was just a clean break, honestly. I mean, him and I are still friends. We always will be. And it's really as simple as that. Um, and yeah, we don't really film together anymore. I don't think he really does like vlogs as much. And he has his own little family channel now, which is really cool. But I have the podcast. I also have an OnlyFans. That's my main source of income. I know a lot of people have things to say about that as well, but I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be able to do the show if it wasn't for OnlyFans. I wouldn't have my home, my animals, my life. Like I wouldn't have anything. So a lot of people don't agree with that way of making money, but I think that it's judgment-free zone here, judgment-free zone everywhere it should be. Yeah. And however you can make your money and you're not hurting anybody or yourself, you know, and there's been some bumps in the road with that. Like it can be draining mentally. Um, And that's just because I think that I am a very open person. I don't mind showing my body off at all. I don't know. Like I work hard for my body. I eat well. And I've always been somebody that's never been ashamed of showing my body. But at least like why not make money from it? But I think that it can become a little bit draining when you're like constantly reading messages or like feeling like oh I have to take a picture of my naked body to to make money I don't know sometimes that can just get a little bit difficult I know people won't understand that because just they don't but it's okay yeah um anyway yes that's my main source of income that's what I do I'm grateful for it even though I don't always love it but that's okay Mm -hmm. and yeah I mean here we are now I have the podcast I have that and I am just a girl living her best life or at least trying to yeah she's cruising Cruising and not for a bruising. Okay, Julie, your turn. Um. All right. Well, what about me? I uh, I <laughs> listen. I I got two jobs. I work here, and this is my passion. This is my passion project. Mm-hmm. And then I also started working at a pickleball facility, and it's been such an adventure. I I've realized like over the past several years of doing all this social media shit. And kind of being almost isolated because we were kind of working together through COVID and kind of after and things have like fizzled out, like you were just saying, but, you know, kind of being in this like one friend group and one, you know, just social situation. And now that I'm working in a place where it's very social and a lot of people, Mm -hmm. I'm realizing so many things about myself that I forgot. Like what? Like I love fucking with people it's so much fun it's like something that i've just completely missed out on in the past several years because i haven't been like out a lot mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. like when we would go out it would just be us. drinking and us it wouldn't be something where we're interacting with a ton of new people but now i'm interacting with a shit ton of people all the time and like i get to I'm I'm honing my skills in terms of like who I can joke with and who I can't. And like I just have the best time ever messing with people. And that's so that sounds mean, but it's not. It's like a fun, you know, like kind of like flirty in a yeah. way, but I just love that shit. And um so I've just been kind of honing my social skills um in the meantime while we work on this stuff. <laughs> well, also I was going to say I feel like the podcast has helped us both kind of break that wall of like yeah not social anxiety but kind of like having to learn to talk to people you don't know yeah and like I feel like there was a point where I felt like I had a stuttering issue after COVID like I'm not even kidding you like I felt like if I didn't know somebody I would just talk too fast and my words would get jumbled and I'm like hold on word vomit like I'm jumbling my words but now I feel like I know to kind of pause and think before I speak and Mm -hmm. I feel like I've gotten better at letting people finish and listening because I feel like it's very easy to want to just get out what you have to say and yeah 
not let people finish. So I feel like, but I feel like that's helped us both because I remember in the beginning, I feel like you were even kind of more like nervous when people would come here. Totally. And now I feel like we have it down. And like, I was definitely way more awkward. Like, mm-hmm. I don't consider myself an awkward person no. in general, but like, you know, growing up, I feel like you and I were pretty similar of just like being kind of like a social person mm-hmm. and being good at that type of thing. And then once you kind of grow up and you're kind of getting more isolated, at like least overthinking too, like you start yeah, thinking more. Absolutely. And I do think like you, at least with COVID, everybody was pretty isolated. You're not interacting with a shit ton of people, mm-hmm. but you know, with this and then for me, the other job I have, like it's kind of getting me back to my zone of like being somebody who people like to talk to and finding yourself. Yeah, for sure, which is necessary. And it's important at this age. And we're both finding ourselves, yes. you know? I also feel like it's interesting cuz like you and I are so different. Yeah. But also in some ways we are so similar. Like I feel mm-hmm. like in a way our humor, not maybe our humor isn't the same, but we like can yeah. joke about the same things. Yeah, for sure. And not get offended. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like we make a great pair. I know, it's so much fun. But we are very different. It's it's very interesting. It is. Cuz we have very different perspectives on a lot of things, but I feel Not like when really, we're together, though. I don't think we have different perspectives. What's the right way to put it? Not perspectives. Maybe like, like I feel like we pretty much agree on. We agree on like, everything. I, I also feel like if you and I have different opinions, we. Find, we like would never not find a middle ground. I don't know. I just don't think we're like that. Also, like at least not with each other. Look at. She's, she, she's kicking. But yeah, maybe not different perspectives. More so like um, different. I don't know. Just what you said is true. Like we're just different in a, yeah. quite a few ways, but when we're together, it's like fucking. We hit it off. I know. We hit just it off, shoot, hit it hard. Shoot the shit. Oh my god. I know. I love her. I know. <laughs> Here's, here's something that we could chat about. Okay. The fact that neither of us post and neither of us do any, except now we're both trying to get our shit together. Okay. So you guys might have noticed, at least with Devorah and I, we don't post YouTube videos on our no. own shit. We don't really do any of that stuff anymore. And at least from my own perspective, I've had a, an extremely hard time being motivated with YouTube because it's so, like I pivoted my content around this time last year to do more of like these commentary style videos or like video essays. And uh, I'd one do really well. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna pivot again and do something that I'm really interested in. And let's see if it does well, major flop. And then I had another (laughs) major flop. And then I had another (laughs) major flop. And so when you have three flops in a row, you just- And this show has had that before too. It's the worst feeling. It's like, oh. The world's ending. Because I don't spend, just a little bit of time on these videos, I would spend like a month working on it. And with the Better Call Saul video I did, I literally spent two months writing that shit. And Wait, I, what did you just say? Better Call Saul. It's a really good show. Okay. I don't know if you'd like it. This but- is like a way me and Julia are different. She's <laughs> yeah. like very like, I always say you're smarter than me, oh, which is like up. when I say that. Okay, keep going. Okay, just, there you go. But when I did that video, I'd worked so hard on it. I like enlisted my mom to help because she's a really brilliant writer. And that was the flop of the fucking century. Okay. And I just remember sitting there like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? And then I tried it again. And like I said, just flop, flop, flop. And so I've just really struggled with the content yeah. because it's like when you, I can't be consistent. And I know that because mm-hmm. I just, it's too, I care too much about writing it to be able to do it every week. And so I kind of want to do like one a month. That was my plan. I got signed with an agency. They ghosted me. <laughs> Not even joking. Dude, I, every agency ghosts me, they so fu- it's fine. He said, he, God, I hope he never sees this, but he he gave me like a brand deal and I was like, oh, I'll take it. Not a peep since. And that was like February. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I am a flop <laughs> on my own. This show is not a flop, but fuck. It fills the void. It does. And you know, it's like, I, I decided I'm going to start making TikToks at least because, you know, the people deserve to see what I'm up to and laugh. Well, it's easier, I think. It's quicker form content. Yeah. I think it's, you don't have to think as much. It doesn't, it's yeah. not as serious. And I also feel like because you're so funny, <laughs> like, and the and your humor is like different than yeah. most. I feel like it, it definitely will find its I hope. audience. We'll because there's so many like aesthetically pleasing ones. I feel like yours is like. Yeah. It's, it like brings like this like fresh air of thanks of like fun and spunk spunk. 
I can't do the aesthetics. I just can't. I, just, like, I like feel like I'm like 50 50. I feel like yeah. I have moments where like I can kind of be aesthetic like when I put my clothes on or yeah. like do something certain. Yeah. But I think that I'm a pretty just like carefree. Yeah. You're just chill. You know what I mean? Weirdo. Yes. I think I am weird. That's why I like you. Okay, good. You know, like I can't really be around. We were talking about this recently. I can't be around like normal, sensitive type people. And I feel like you're somebody I can be around because it's just like we, I feel like I never have to like. You can just be yourself. Exactly. You don't have to think what you have to say. Exactly. And I love that about you. you Julie and I might start dating. We've kind of Um, been thinking about it because the prospects are dim. mm -hmm. Um, so if you guys and that's see true. us getting like, married, there's, I will say this now that I'm older, I'm like in this point in my life where I'm like, what do I do? Yeah. Like, do you join a dating app? No, because, <laughs> and I say everywhere. no, because I feel like you'd probably end up going on like five to 10 dates and only find maybe one normal person and no one's really normal, but yeah. like, I don't know. I just feel like it's so hard to find somebody you align with. I'm just <laughs> thinking in my head the weird things I've experienced. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but I I feel like I'm at a point genuinely where I am looking for my husband. <laughs> I want a husband. I do. Julie, I'm serious. It's and my favorite thing you say. It just always makes me laugh. I'm like, I really am so serious. She's got to find her husband, and, guys. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, I feel like I've dated people. And... <laughs> <laughs> They're just not my husband. <laughs> no. The fuck? No. Like, but the older you get, I feel like you become pickier and then you just notice more things. And then I'm like, fuck, this yeah. guy doesn't work out either. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Literally, it's am like, I going to be alone? I sometimes like drive in the car and I'm like, am I going to just be alone forever? Like, it's sad. Like, I feel like everybody wants like a partner. You just want somebody. I want to be loved. Somebody to hold. I don't really want to be held. I just want to be loved and treated like a diamond. Okay. <laughs> no, don't we fucking um, all fuck. But no, like kind of back to what Julie was saying. <laughs> I've, I've been trying to post more because I need new eyes. Yeah. On my stuff. And, you know, I think it's good for, I think if you're on social media doing one thing, it's really good to kind of keep up to date and do all things if you can. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's just good. Do you, why not? Just, Good business practice. Yes. And you should be utilizing all the apps. If right. You can. It's the, here's the thing. It's, it's like, hard, but it is. And I think we both have the same problem of, at least for me, I cannot be like, hey, this is me, 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 me. I love my life. I want to show you yeah. me. And like, and that's why I couldn't vlog. Like whenever I would try yeah. to do the YouTube videos, I was, I think I just overthink it too much. Like yeah. I am not an, I am not natural at being like, Hey, this is what I'm doing because I don't, I just don't enjoy it. Like it just didn't, it felt like I was thinking too much into it rather than just enjoying it. Like I feel like at least with something like TikTok, it's like you have so many, so much variety. You can do your outfit. You can do a vlog where you don't even show your face or yourself. Like you can literally do anything. So I feel like it's more. You don't have to talk. You don't have to do anything. It's more, I think, up to you and it's quick and it's easy and why not? Yeah, totally. Totally. It's just like definitely there's a different vibe between vlogging on TikTok versus vlogging mm-hmm. on YouTube. YouTube. Because YouTube to some extent can be fairly self-aggrandizing. I'm not to me I just can't do it. I tried the vlog shit and I tried to do it in my own way by like making fun of myself, but it's just hard. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. But I think with TikTok I can I can manage. I can I can make fun of myself in a short form. And have it be something I actually enjoy. Yeah. It's just like consistency is a problem for me. I have really serious problems with consistency. I don't think I do. That's, you know, you're really good about that. I think like, once for sure. I get a thought in my mind. Yeah. I'm just like. You stick to it. Zoom. Yeah. You're but really good about that. But that's because I'm like anal when it comes to stuff. Like when yeah. I have an idea, I'm like, I can't stop. That's good. Got to keep it like that, you know? Well, sometimes it's bad when it comes to like stuff like hair dyeing. Because then I'm like in my. Yeah. Head, like, should I dye my hair? Should I? You know how mm. I am with that. I'll like randomly send you edited pictures of me with blonde streaks and be like, should I? Do that it? always makes me laugh. She's always like, no. And I do always it. say no. She's always like, your black is your I- iconic color. You can't do anything else. I'm sorry, but it's just true. Yeah. I mean, maybe like an occasional little change, like that one that you sent me. Those like those really dark brown mm-hmm. highlights, like that looked nice. Well, because I have extensions, it's just, I just like can't. You know, so. it's just uh, it's black is what it is. Black is fine. Yep, we like it. 
Okay. You match your dog, you match your cat, you match your house. Yes. It's perfect. That's that. There's not much to tell, yeah. you guys. It's just not much going on. No. You're here for some pretty cool stories. We got mm-hmm. none. We got none. <laughs> yeah, we really don't. Like, I I wish, like, when we've had guests kind of cancel or just not show up, I was like, I wish that I had something that I could really speak on. And I just don't. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like everybody has little things happen in life where they're like, this made me feel this way or this was kind of traumatic to me or this, 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 whatever. Yeah. But like, I don't have something that I really just feel passionate about that I could sit here and share. Yeah, totally. Um, it's, I don't. It's also like you had a show where you shared so That's much. That's true. I mean, and I feel like I shared everything for yeah. like a couple years. So. Yeah. I'm done sharing. Yeah. But no, I mean, I feel like we just kind of figured <laughs> since we had a flop of an episode. Yeah. Why not hop on here? Let you guys get to know us briefly. Yeah. Do a quick little, hello, this is me. Hello, this is J-Dog. <laughs> so we call her around here. D-Man and J-Dog. Yes. Um, This is the show. This is what the show is about. Behind the scenes of the show. This is our lives. We really, I would say we don't do much. Julie's a pickleball lady. I don't even play. I just sit. She just sit sits and watch at the desk. And I fuck with people. That's um, literally my life. I run a zoo basically at my house uh we i we like to work out every now and then yeah and we're just we're cruising we're living life that's but right seriously i do want to say julie you can give your words after okay i do want to say <laughs> to the audience and the guests thank you so much for always listening and supporting the show and i really do hope you enjoy it because i enjoy doing it and it means a lot to me if I can make a difference and help people. I feel like in some way or another, this is kind of what I wanted to do when I was in college. Like I, for those of you that don't know, I wanted to be in the FBI. But like the reason was because I wanted to make a difference. And I feel like if my way to make a difference is kind of like mixed with social media and I have this platform where I can give people a voice and also learn, it's like the best of both worlds. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. And if you listen to this episode, I know it's not anything, you know, to really learn much other than about me and me and J-Dog, the yeah. men behind behind the show. Um, thank you guys. Seriously, I really do appreciate it. And I really do hope that you enjoy it. And if there's anybody that's listening that's thinking about coming on or wanting to come on, definitely. We're literally open to any and all guests. There's no limits for this show. We have some really funny, exciting episodes coming up too, which I always like because it kind of throws some difference in there. We have a lot more, I, I would say like, traumatic type episodes yeah. but every now and then we have things that are more like fetishes or like yeah. I don't know like I, I really want the show to be extremely diverse anyone and any anything anyone all is welcome absolutely um, yeah but that was kind of my that was beautiful thank you good job I was giving I was pretend, pretending I was on stage like giving a speech oh I like that thing. maybe one day we will be on stage no we will be envision it maybe I think I envision Oprah but Devorah you know what I mean oh damn yeah that was powerful. Yeah. Both from Baltimore. Hey. Whoa. The signs are there. Wait, Oprah's from Baltimore? Yeah. At least she, I think she got her career, her career started in Baltimore. Okay. How, How about crazy Steve? is that? Yeah. <gasps> Love Steve. Steve. Controversy. People get upset about Steve Harvey. Well, I like him, so. I do too. Sorry. Makes me laugh. Anybody that makes me smile or laugh, I love them. Exactly. You okay, know? Give your, give your, okay. give your speech. I also want to thank all of you for <laughs> tuning in every week. It's really something like genuinely, I feel like I am always learning when I am just sitting here absorbing the episode and then editing it and just getting to see everybody's reactions and how much they learn from the things that we're also learning from. It's just really, really cool. And I want to thank um, Devorah, Miss Devorah for um, this opportunity of a lifetime. You got to You got (laughs) to Devore. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, but seriously, it's it's been such a ride in the best way. I don't know. I just can't. Okay, Priscilla. Sorry, but I like, don't they, mess the camera up. I wish they could see the what, the look she just gave you. I know she's pissed. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a ride. It's been such a ride, and it's been just a genuinely really cool learning experience on a ton of different fronts, but. Getting to know all these new people, getting to hear their stories has been truly like one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life. Yeah. Truly. Aww. And no, seriously, it's like something that I really, I 
I couldn't dream of this type of opportunity happening, but now that it is, it just feels right, you know? Fuck yes. Fuck yes. So on love, that note, love you. Love you and happy one year to we're all insane. Let's fucking go, bro. Ah! That was good. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, baby.